This is the Yorkshire Museum. All around you can see the material and remains of lives lived thousands of years ago. If these artifacts could speak, they would surely tell stories of hard work and struggle, but also of joy. But how did they end up here? What paths led them to this point where we can gaze at them through glass? We want to bring it with us as we discover this by visiting the site of Star Ka. This journey will take us back 11,000 years. This is a time of hunters and gatherers, but also people settling down. This is the Mesolithic, the Middle Stone Age. I think that Starkar probably looked like a very busy place. There were probably a number of structures that people were living in. It would have been on the edge of a lake. There would have been quite a lot of woodland around. There would have been people going along in little boats on the lake and a lot of animals around as well. Flint was very important to these people. In fact, I don't really know how they would have survived without flint. Huge amounts of tools for doing a variety of different things would be made from flint. We have a range of different animals that people hunted. Red deer and aurochs, elk, wild pig, roe deer, things like pine martin, fox, beaver. I think as a hunter, it would have been quite difficult times. You had no guarantee that you were going to come back with a kill. Well, a lot of what we find on the ground is manufacturing waste. It's an interesting question why we get tools deposited, particularly when they seem to be getting flint from quite far away. In some places it may well be some kind of ritual deposition. In some places it may be that they were cleaning out areas and dumping flint as rubbish. I certainly think for a start everyone would have been, uh, I think, quite annoyed with the huge amount of flint underfoot. Uh, I would have hated to walk around here in barefoot. <laughs> there just seems to be a carpet of little sharp things to stand on. Finding Clint is really exciting because you really get to understand the Mesolithic period from it. Like there's a lot it can tell you and it's really kind of a touchable link to the Mesolithic world. Finding Flint is, is great. I mean, it was the technology of the, of the time and you think about comparing it to other sites from the period, just the sheer volume that you get at the start of car, you realise how important and how much action is going on at this site. It's great. The vast majority of what we know about people's lives at this time comes from lithic artefacts. The lithic artefacts are everywhere. Other things are only in certain places where preservation allows. Every facet of life kind of revolves around this material, so it's very, very important. Flint is it's an amazing thing, really, because we can study it in terms of uh, what we think the tools were that people were using. But actually, with scientific techniques now, we can use science to analyse what people were using the flint for. These scientific methods are part of today, and we have come full circle. You have witnessed a journey spanning thousands of years, and the flint you can see around you was in fact created by people like us in a very different time. Even though these artifacts are now behind glass, their stories are far from over. After thousands of years in the dark, they are now tangible reminders of a time long gone. Making these silent stones speak is key in our interpretations of the past. Today, you have become part of these artifact stories. That's quite an amazing thought, isn't it?